No one knows for sure why the custom started, but in the 14th century, there were crosses that began appearing as a symbol of Lithuanian defiance toward foreign invaders. Since the medieval period, the Hill of Crosses has represented the resistance of the Lithuanians to the enemy oppression that has come against them. Crosses were placed there in 1795 when portions of the country were incorporated into Russia. Later, during 1831 to 1863, many crosses were erected on this hill as a call for freedom. By 1895, there were at least 150 large crosses that were standing on the Hill of Crosses. By 1914, the number had grown to 200. By 1940, 400 large crosses were surrounded by thousands of smaller ones. The German war machine drove out the Soviets in World War II only to see the surrounding area suffer even more when Soviet Russia retook it at war's end, making it a part of the Soviet Socialist Republic. And during this era, patriots continued to declare their hope for freedom from foreign domination by placing crosses on the hill. The sizes and the variety of crosses are amazing as their number. Beautifully carved out of wood or sculpted out of, out of metal, the crosses range from 10 feet tall to the limitless tiny examples that cover the larger crosses like wallpaper. The Soviets repeatedly tried to destroy the cry for freedom by the Lithuanians. Three times the hill was bulldozed. In 1961, in 1973, and also in 1975. The crosses were set on fire. The metal was melted into scrap metal, and the area was covered with waste and sewage. There were even plans by authorities to build a dam and to flood that area so that the hill of crosses could not be built again. But following each of these experiences, local residents and pilgrims from all over that country would come again and replace the crosses on the hill. In 1961, the Soviets destroyed an estimated 5,000 crosses. In 1975, another 1,200 were destroyed. By 1991, when they finally gained their independence, the number had grown to over 50,000 crosses. Notwithstanding the repeated attempts by these enemies of freedom and level in the hill, has been attempted three times. They've burned the crosses and they've turned them into scrap metal. They've even covered the area with waste and sewage. But the Hill of Crosses stands this day, and in 2006 there was thought to be over 100,000 symbols of the crosses that represent their freedom on the Hill of Crosses. Quite an amazing place and story that I read just a few days ago that was written by Reverend Pamer from the state of Ohio, a pastor there. The message of the cross is the greatest hope of all of humanity. It's the cross. It's the declaration of real freedom. It's the old rugged cross that we sang about this morning. It's the emblem of suffering. It's the emblem of shame that we sing about. And we're hearing preach here this morning. It's not a beautiful picture because it represents pain and misery and suffering and shame. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. God started it and he finished it. I'm thankful this morning that was, there was an endurance that took place. And he was willing to do it for your sins and for my sins today. Oh, there's something about the power of the cross. The enemy of the cross, it's there. But I'm thankful that there is a church here this morning that understands, that comprehends that there's still power in the cross that Jesus died on for your sins and all of humanity. He fulfilled the mission. He overcame death, hell, and the grave. He still is the author and the finisher of your faith. You didn't get halfway into it and say, you know what, this is too painful. 
There's too much sorrow. There's too much grief. It was a lot more than I anticipated. It was Jesus that endured the cross. Amen? Hallelujah. John 10 and 10 speaks of the enemy of the cross. Three intentions to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I'm preaching to you about the hope of the cross. Hallelujah. Paul gave us a stern warning. And to the Philippians, chapter 3 and verse 18, he said, For many walk that are the enemies of the cross. Many walk that are the enemies of the cross, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose, whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. There are many that walk in this life that the Bible refers to them as the enemy of the cross. Who mind earthly things. Those that maybe have heard the message that we're hearing preached today. And the songs that we've sung about today. But for some reason they've turned away from the cross. And the blood. And the sorrow. But it's amazing today as we read this story today of this hill of crosses. Amen. The symbols and the signs that that people point to and, and what men and women will do to gain their freedom here in this world. Many times we take for granted what we have here in America. But across this world there is a fight for freedom. and There are symbols that are, are raised up signifying that freedom and that liberty that people want in this life. But just as oppressive political enemies have tried repeatedly to destroy the heel of crosses. There have been many enemies who seek to destroy the message of Jesus Christ and the cross and to delete it from our faith in this life. Paul said there would be many who are the enemies of the cross of Christ. But the cross is still a, a declaration of the freedom from the oppression of sin that we all face that has plagued mankind from the beginning. There's no evil enemy that can destroy the power of of the sacrifice that Jesus paid for your sins. The enemy is present this morning, but the cross is still there. It doesn't matter what's been brought against it. The power, the love, and the mercy of the cross, it's here in this service today. Would somebody lift your hand and say, Thank you, Lord, that it has not been deleted from my life. Thank you, Lord, for the message of the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The cross, you don't hear the message of what it really represents much in this world anymore. There's a lot of feel-good sermons with comfort words that'll make you feel good, that'll make you feel comfortable. But our generation needs to hear the message of, of the cross. They've heard enough of the message of prosperity, lots of love and blab it and grab it and you want it, receive it, and accept in the Lord. But what about this story this morning? Tell evangelists, when's the last time you preached a message centered on the cross and Calvary and the blood of Jesus and 39 stripes upon His back and the lacerations and the skin that was laid open and the pain and the sorrow, the bleeding, the misery, a man of sorrows, Isaiah 53 and 1 acquainted with grief. And we hid it as it were our faces from Him. He was despised and we esteemed Him not. Verse 4, Surely He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for the cross? It's not a pretty picture today, but the cross, it's there. The sorrow, it's not a beautiful picture, the anguish, but it's there. Why? For the penalty of sin. For who? It was for you and it was for me. It was for the remission of sins. Don't ever stop talking about the blood of Jesus. Don't ever stop singing about the cross. Amen?
Don't ever stop telling your children about the cross and what Jesus did for their sins. Amen? It's the greatest symbol of hope for freedom from sin. The answer is still found in the cross. Our hope is still kneeling before the cross and saying, Lord, you are my Savior. You are my love. And I believe in the power of the cross. Hallelujah. There's no other religion that speaks of a Savior that gave His life for all of humanity. It wasn't Allah that was on the cross. It wasn't Muhammad that was on the cross. It wasn't Buddha that gave His life for all of humanity on the cross. It was Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Don't neglect the message of the cross. Don't neglect to mention His name. His name is Jesus, and He died for your sins. He came into this world, amen, to pay the penalty and the price on the cross. It's the greatest symbol of hope for all of humanity, for all of St. Petersburg, for all of the world. The crosses can be found on the hill of crosses. The cross can be found in different buildings and and churches across this world and this city. But yet the enemy of the cross is present. The scripture says that there is no other gospel. There's no other message of hope. And all the church said, Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 1 said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. He determined, verse 2, not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Church, if we want to tap into the power, can I tell you, can I remind you of the message that we need to be telling people about and preaching and teaching? It's the message of the cross. It's the message of Jesus Christ laying down His life for all of humanity. If we want the demonstration of the Spirit and of the power, we've got to preach the cross. Amen? As the Bible says, we've got to preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. There's power when you start telling somebody about the cross. The cross will move you. It will stir you up. And the cross will change you if you will let it. But don't be an enemy of the cross. Don't water down the message. The blood is is worthy to be mentioned and preached about. On a Sunday morning at the Life Center, God forbid if I ever stop preaching about the cross. God forbid if I stop talking about the blood of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to keep singing that it still reaches to the lowest valley. That it still flows from the highest mountain. It's the blood. It's the blood that gives me strength from blood from day to day. The story of the cross, it, it hasn't changed. But it's been omitted by some. It's been avoided by some groups. Because it seems too messy. And it seems too gory. And it seems too bloody. The enemy of the cross tries to erase it. But this morning I want to encourage somebody. Would you listen for the cry of the cross? Would you listen? Would you open your eyes and understand that that blood is for you? Don't let the enemy of the cross overcome your mind. Our hope is still in the old rugged cross that we sang about this morning. There's power in the cross. Can we lift our hands and say thank you Lord? Thank you for that old rugged cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Get to thinking about them old songs when you preach an old landmark message like this. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, 
There's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. There's power in the message, in the words about the cross. Don't ever stop singing them old songs about the cross. Amen. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there by faith i received my sign and now i am happy all the day at the cross at the cross where i first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there by faith i received my sight and now i am happy all the day i know this is a little different today but would you just lift your hands and say thank you lord for the cross we're just pausing today we're just thanking the King of kings and the Lord of lords for the cross. Oh, the enemy of the cross sits out there. But Lord, we're here to honor you today through singing, through your word, through the preaching. Thank God for the cross. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The cross, it has to be more than just a necklace. The cross has to be more than just something that you hang on the rear view mirror. The cross has to be something more than a decoration in a build in a church or a religious place. The cross is where you kneel and where Jesus forgives you of your sins. It's the cross where your sins are washed away. See, my friend, it involves true repentance, forgiveness. The price tag for many people, it seems, it's just too much. It's the mentality of the rich young ruler, ruler who said, You know what? I want to follow you, Lord. I want to serve you. And he said, Sell everything that you have and follow me. Wait a minute. That's too much, Lord. The price tag, it's there. It's at the cross. But the Lord starts speaking to us and, and says, There's some things in your heart that you need to let go of. There's some sins in your life that you need to release. Would you hear me, my friend, this morning? I'm preaching to you about the cross and repentance in Jesus' name. Don't be the enemy of the cross. Don't try to lessen the impact of this message here this morning where there is freedom from sin. There is power in the cross. The message is still being preached. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The cross... Everybody say the cross. The cross calls men and women to repentance and a change in their lifestyle where it should. We live in a world where many are unwilling to accept the message of the cross. We live in a world that accepts homosexuality as just an alternative lifestyle. A society that looks the other way when it comes to abortion. And where infidelity in marriage has become just a way of life. I'm preaching about the enemies of the cross. Even celebrated by some. The enemies of the cross. The infidel. The cursor. The profane person. The adulterer. The proud. Those whose hearts are filled with evil thoughts. With sin. Fornication. Murderers. I'm preaching about the enemies of the cross. Wickedness and deceit. Blasphemy and pride. Are enemies of the cross. By their lifestyle, they seek to destroy the symbol that calls for death from sin. It's amazing what you hear and what you see in this world. Amen. It shouldn't amaze you. You should identify and say, you know what? That's just the enemy of the cross. Praise God. I want to encourage you this morning. Hold fast to the cross. Hold fast to your convictions. When the world says it's okay, you need to look back to the cross and understand there's still some conviction. Amen? There's still a belief system that is found in the one God apostolic message. It's in the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
preaching about the cross this morning. There's power in the cross. It's one cross. It doesn't take a hundred thousand crosses on the hill of crosses in Lithuania to get the point of cross. There's one cross, amen? There's one Savior. There's one broken body. There's not a need for others. There's one God, amen? There was one cross on Golgotha, one Savior. One Savior for our soul. The cross, there's still power in that old rugged cross. So there's not a need for others to join the forces to be the enemy of the cross. But there's a cry. There's a message today. Amen. There is a voice that's speaking to somebody here today. You fought the message for too long. You haven't surrendered your life for too long. It's time for you to find a place at the cross. Amen. Let's lift our hands and ask the Lord to speak to us. Hallelujah. As we talk about, as we sing about the cross today, Lord, remind us of this awesome message and truth today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2 and 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. He spoiled the plans of principalities. He spoiled the plans of the enemy of the cross. He spoiled everything that they had put into motion. It was Jesus Christ that made a show of them openly. Who said, you know what? You're bringing it against me, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay down my life. I'm going to bleed and I'm going to die. But it doesn't stop there. Amen. I'm going to take the keys from death, hell, and the grave. And I'm going to come back. And I'm going to be resurrected. And I'm going to give hope. And I'm going to give life. And I'm going to give mercy to a lost and a dying world. It doesn't matter the power of the enemy of the cross. There was a power that was greater. It was Jesus Christ, amen, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No matter the enemy, it was Jesus that blotted out the handwriting, that spoiled the principalities and the powers, triumphing over them in it, the cross. Before everything else comes the cross, Before the disease that's come against you or your family, there's the cross. Before sickness, there's the cross. Before grief, before sorrow, there's the cross. Before Pentecost, there's the cross. Before conversion, there's the cross. Before the sins are washed away, there's the cross. Don't fight it today. Don't become the enemy of the cross. It's this simple. Just focus on the Lord. Lift your hands and say, you you know what, Lord, I I need your help today. I need you to wash me. I need you to cleanse me. I need you to make me a new creature. Hear the voice of the preacher today. There's still power in the blood of Jesus. There's still power in the cross. It's Jesus that died for your sins. I'm preaching about Calvary. I'm preaching about a loving Savior who's in this place today. To wash your sins away. Would we stand this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. The enemies of the cross are there. There's victory today. He's already triumphed. Over all the enemies. It's still on the cross. You may say this is old fashioned. But you know what? It's the word of God. It's the cross that I refuse to get away from. I can't just preach it around Easter. It's the message of the cross that we need to promote. And tell Jesus that the only hope for the sins in your life is through the cross. Whatever you're facing today, there's enough power in this place. I haven't come, as Paul said, with enticing words of man's wisdom. But as we have preached the cross... There is power and there is spirit in this altar here today. Jesus is speaking to someone right now as we conclude this service. 
You've heard the message of hope. You've heard the warning about being the enemy of the cross. But how do you respond today? How is it with your soul? If you pass from this life tonight as you were sleeping, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? Think about it. Don't be the enemy of the cross. Don't push him aside and say, you know what, that's for me. But I pray today as a preacher that you would respond to the word. and That you would find a place in this altar. And you would lift your hand and say, God, you know what, I need that message. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Would somebody respond to the cross? He did it for all of you today. How do you respond to the message of the cross? This altar is open. This altar should be full. It's not just a tradition. It's not a ritual. This is a place of forgiveness. This is a place of change. This is a place where we kneel and we say, God, it's at the cross. At the cross. It's where I first saw the light. Hallelujah. Thank God for the cross today. Sing them blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day To the highest mountain Oh, it's available today And it flows to the lowest valley Oh, it's the blood that gives me strength From day to day Turn him away. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. It's the blood that gives me strength from death. And it falls 
to the lowest valley. Oh, it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. To the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, no. it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. And it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, oh, it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. Strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Oh, we know it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, mm-hmm.